Hey there, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Jeannie Petrucci, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and culinary coach. And I am going to be taking you uh, in the next few minutes on a brief kitchen studio tour. I am currently standing in the teaching kitchen at my private practice. It is a very modest kitchen that is uh, in an old home. My practice is in an older home. And uh, this will just give you a good idea of how you can conduct a cooking demo in a really tight space. Uh, you just need a cup to keep a couple of things in mind and why don't we just get started with that so you do need to have a bright space you also need to have an unobstructed view between the camera and yourself so you can see right now that there's nothing between me and the camera and behind me is just a nice bright space that is not cluttered. So the first real assessment that you have to do before um, tackling a live cooking demo is to select the space that you're going to be working in. So bright is always great and unobstructed view is really necessary and uncluttered I actually think is really necessary as well. If there's too much going on in the background then people will be distracted with the lessons and the content that you're trying to share with them. Uh, so why don't we move on to selection of your camera. So free cameras, you actually have two options, your phone and your computer. Your phone is really useful for IG live cooking demos. Uh, actually, you can't stream into Instagram with an external camera right now, so uh, your phone is really all you have. Uh, the the cameras that are um, part of new iPhones in particular, I really don't have any experience with Androids, but the iPhone video camera is like exceptional. Really, really great, gives you a high quality image, and I'm going to show you um, a holder for the camera that makes doing IG Lives like a cinch. Uh, the second free piece of equipment I would consider free because most people have them is a laptop. So your laptop has a camera, you can stream live from there as well. I will also show you a holder for your computer that is super, super, super useful for streaming uh, live cooking demos, especially in Zoom Room. So if you're doing, if you're streaming through Zoom or you're doing a private class in a Zoom, uh, this holder is really uh, something to consider. Uh, then we have our mid-priced uh, range camera for video, which would be a camcorder. And then the higher end would be the DSLR, which is what you're seeing right now. I did not invest in a DSLR until just a few months ago, uh, and that was because I had a client who really demanded a more high quality image of uh, demos and uh, for food photography, so I invested in a DSLR. So kind of as revenue allows and as your budget allows, you can start free and then work your way up to the DSLR, but you absolutely don't need to start with the DSLR. I am going to show you the holder for both the iPhone and the computer, but before we leave this to you, let me just show you the tripod that I use. Uh, this is by Manfrotto, super sturdy. Uh, if you have expensive equipment, you want a sturdy you want a sturdy tripod. If you're using just your phone, um, it's probably less important just because the phone is super light, but my cameras are heavy, so I love the Manfrotto. Uh, I also really like the fact that it is adjustable at five points. So we have four points on the arms. There are three arms here, which is great. Uh, my teaching kitchen has a lopsided floor, so that is super useful. But then you can also adjust the bar here that fits into the tripod. Absolutely love these tripods. I have several of them um, to hold different pieces of equipment during live cooking demos. Uh, I also have, you'll note here, on the top of my tripod an adapter. It is a rotating head. So again, just allowing me to adjust depending on the view that I want. This is not absolutely necessary, um, but it's really great for adjusting your view. Before we leave this view, I wanna talk about two other essentials that you have to consider. So consider your environment, consider your camera, your video camera, and then the two other considerations um, for equipment really are the lights and the sound. Uh, for sound, you don't have to purchase anything. You can use the built-in mic for your cameras, whether it's your DSLR or your phone, but you are going to have a bit of an echo. 
it's totally fine. Um, but if you're looking for crisper sound, you're going to want to do uh, a mic. I have never had success using a tethered mic, meaning you know using my headset tethered to my phone or my camera because I move too much. But that might be an option for you. Uh, I really like um, wireless mics. I have purchased three, so hopefully you will learn from my experience. Um, I really like the Rode mic, hands down, the sturdiest uh, and uh, the best quality sound. So I just unclipped my pack here. There, there are two transmitters. There's one attached to my DSLR camera with this um, adapter cord. It's plugged into a mic jack and it transmits to the one that I'm wearing. I am wearing a headset. I did not invest in the headset uh, probably until about six months into doing cooking demos um, because I found that the lavalier, the mics that clip to your lapels, I was brushing up against it a lot because I move a lot. Even though I'm pretty much my feet are in one space, I kind of move a lot when I talk. And so it was a little bit distracting. Uh, so I decided to invest in the headset. Again, you can start free using your internal mic, uh, but if you want a really high quality crisp sound, uh, I do recommend the Rode wireless mic. So the Rode wireless mic, you can connect to your camera. You can also connect to your phone and your computer. You need a different adapter. I've listed the adapter uh, inside of the guide that I sent to you. Um, you need an adapter for the pack, which is this one here. So the one to the camera is black to black and the one to the phone is black to gray. Uh, you will also, if you're using an iPhone, you'll also need that adapter as well. So working, I think I'm telling you like three week, at least three weeks ahead of time, really doing an assessment of all of your equipment to make sure you kind of have all your ducks in a row and test it to make sure that it works out is going to be important for you to have a successful live cooking demonstration. So that's the sound. You could use a boom mic too. Those, those work pretty well. Those attach to the top of your camera. It's either like a big fuzzy ball with a mic on the inside um, or it's just a long stick. They work pretty well too, but I just found that the headset gives the crispest um, audio. So let's move on to the lighting. Behind my camera, what you're not seeing, but I'll show you in a minute, um, are three light sources. I also have a fourth source of light, which is the window to my right here. It is snowing outside right now, so I actually have a lot of reflective light coming in, a lot of natural light. Just be aware that even if you have a really great light source that's coming in directly at your face, um, that will change with the weather. If it's cloudy, or let's say it starts sunny and and then goes to cloudy in the middle of your cooking demo that is going to impact um, the the participants view, the people who are participating in your live cooking demo who are watching. So having at least one more source of artificial light or one more source of light that is artificial could be really important. A ring light's a great place to start. I love ring lights. Um, there are all different levels that you can buy into a ring light. You can get them on Amazon. Really super simple to use. And uh, I do recommend that you find one that's on a sturdy uh, tripod that can be adjusted up and down. So you could use it tabletop or you could use it standing while you're doing your demo. I also have two other points of light here. So four total. I have my natural light, my ring light, and then I have two other sources. I have LED panels. You could use those or you could also use um, light boxes, but you really don't need to bring those in until you start and see where, where the shadows are in your space. It's going to be different for everybody. You might find that just the ring light is great, uh, but you might find that there's shadow on one side. So you might need one more point of light, which would be the light box, which again, I'll show you because that's over here too. So from this view, we've covered um, the space, the essentials for your electronic uh, equipment like your camera, uh, the sound as well, and then the lighting. So let's go ahead and take a look around the space to see kind of how it's situated. Uh, remember, you're working on like a yoga mat space. So everything that I'm going to show you that I use for the cooking demo is within arm's reach. Typically, participants and viewers are very patient, like there have been times when I did forget an ingredient and had to run to the pantry and had to leave the space, but you want to avoid that whenever possible. So being really well prepared and having everything set up just takes the stress off of you and makes the experience just that much better for the people viewing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kitchen.
This setup I'm going to show you was for an actual cooking demo that I held on February 11th on Facebook. It was streamed live. It is a Valentine's Day dinner recipes with ingredients to fuel your soul and your body. My intent for this event was to share with people how to make simple, delicious comfort food recipes for their families for Valentine's Day. And we also talked about how the ingredients promote optimal heart health. This is the view from my camera, so you can see it is unobstructed. All of the lights are uh, positioned behind the view. This is my prep space that has everything that I need to conduct this demo, including utensils and equipment. So go through your recipes super carefully to make sure that you have your measuring spoons, your spatula, your knives, everything that you need should be within arm's reach. Uh, for this demo, I needed a food processor and an induction burner as well. On the shelf underneath the prep area, I keep just like essential pantry items. So wipes, wet wipes for my hands. I have paper towels. And then I also keep a basic things like vinegar and olive oil and maybe some grains that I'll be talking about during the demo. To my left, what you're seeing are the prepped ingredients for the recipes. I selected three recipes that aligned with the intent of my cooking demo. So comfort foods that have heart health benefits. And each one of the recipes is prepped to a certain point. What you're seeing here is the space behind me. I choose to keep my serving dishes right behind me. So I'm looking at the camera to my left are all my ingredients. As I'm finishing one recipe, I put everything back on the tray and move it to the prep area so that I, I'm always keeping my prep area clean. And then behind me, I have things like the sheet pans that are prepped with parchment paper ready to go into the oven and also my serving dishes. So this was a holder for the laptop that I mentioned earlier. I do not use my laptop to stream live into Facebook because I use a switching station, which is managed on my laptop. So I do have to have it handy. Uh, but the reason for me showing you this holder is because it is really a game changer for Zoom rooms and not having to struggle with an overhead view. You can actually get a really good overhead view of your prep area using just your laptop camera and this holder because this holder can pitch your computer up and as you open up and um, adjust the top to your laptop you're also adjusting your camera right so if it is in the upright position the camera is on you but then you can very easily with a light touch uh, really pivot it down to get almost an overhead view using this um, holder allows me to get an unobstructed view of my prep area so i really love this holder i uh, listed the resource in the guide for you um, there are several of them out there but just make sure you get a holder where you can control the pitch of your laptop. To the left, you're seeing my iPad. I have my iPad handy so that I can actually look into the Facebook group. So I log in as a viewer and monitor comments because I'm looking at a camera the whole time. I really, I can't monitor comments because I'm not streaming through my computer. So having a laptop handy is a really good way, number one, to confirm that you're live, right? And uh, also to monitor comments as they come in. Just before I wrap up each live cooking demonstration, I do a recipe reveal. So I bring all of the recipes into the view and I ask the viewers who are on with me at that moment to commit to making something. So making one recipe or all of them or several of them, I just ask that open-ended question, what are you going to make? What goal are you going to set for yourself? And then in that way, I'm able to address goal setting, even though I'm not in person uh, with the viewers and people always Always respond so it's really fun to see uh, what their reactions are sometimes it's I'm going to make all of them or I'm going to make uh, the chicken or the asparagus for my family tonight or something like I already have all the ingredients I'm so excited so that's just really great engagement to get plus it also drives us towards achieving goal setting
once your live event is over, you want to start capturing just tons of content here. So take pictures of each recipe individually so that um, if you are doing, uh, if you are adding these recipes to your meal plans, uh, you'll have that image. You can also use that image, of course, in social media or in newsletters. Uh, and then also don't forget to capture some videos. So do like a boomerang video or just a quick scan of your workspace so that you can repurpose that content later. Something like an Instagram story post saying, hey, look what we made today on our Instagram live cooking demo. So just another way to engage people in different outlets using the same content. So post event, I use this setup to stream to different outlets and let people know what we did. So this was a Facebook Live event. So I did a live broadcast in my consumer facing Instagram account uh, to let people know what we made and to kind of head on over to Facebook to check it out. And I do a recipe reveal. I also use this setup to stream into my RD facing um, private Facebook group because I want my community to know kind of what I did and, and share any behind the scenes thing that I learned uh, doing the demo that day. So the last thing that you'll want to do when your cooking demo is complete, um, while you're enjoying the food that you made, just go back into the platform uh, within which you streamed and start managing the comments. While you will be answering comments during the broadcast, uh, number one, there might be some that you missed, and number two, you really do need to respond to those um, after the event as well, because the algorithm will favor um, posts that have more engagement. So somebody might have asked you a question that you answered, but Facebook doesn't know that until you type in your answer. So make sure after the event that you go back in, you manage comments uh, within Facebook. You can also trim your video. Uh, at this time, I am working in my kitchen alone. So uh, there is like a period of time at the beginning and at the end of each video that I'm fussing a little bit with the equipment. I kind of clip those out, which is really useful. Um, and then the video is just a little bit tighter. So after the the event, there are still some other things that you can do. Um, do respond to the comments as quickly as possible. Again, that's really more for algorithm purposes. Um, the platform will favor that and show your video recording to more people. So thank you so much for joining me for this kitchen studio tour. And I hope to see you in the kitchen again soon. Take care.